Welcome back to our video series on the play framework using Scala. We left off last time with this interesting error uh, that we had just come across. And this turns out is actually an example of there are times when as a developer, you just get lucky. As I mentioned in the previous video, I don't normally use this underscore notation. I use the state.copy notation. And it turns out that in this case, that's exactly what fixes this. Okay, and the reason for that is, if, uh, in reading the error message that we got, this E here, uh, basically, okay, so when you put this as a lambda, remember this is a lambda, and you don't have complete control over when it's being called. Apparently it gets called later, after this E event has basically been thrown away by React. And so you're trying to use an event that no longer exists by the time that it calls this copy method. If you use the state.copy, that's not an issue. You could use the other shorthand if you weren't using the event. You could also use it if, you, if this were longer and you preserved the event uh, using you know, a syntax that, that keeps it around. That doesn't apply to us, so we'll just go with the state.copy. Okay. There's one other thing that I want to show you here before we go work with play, and that is I want to add kind of another layer to our component. So we have our top page that adds a component to the DOM, and then we have this one component here. Uh, I would like to have the ability to have another uh, component kind of on top that changes how it gets displayed between uh, so, so it kind of has a mode in which it gets displayed, and uh, it will show us the ability to kind of pass messages back up the, the React hierarchy. So I'm going to make another component. I'm going to call it top component because it's the top of our React hierarchy. And it will be a class that extends component from Slinky Core. And we're going to need uh, some of the same types of things in it. Actually, in this case, props, I'm just going to set props to unit. And our state is going to be uh, just a Boolean that tells us whether or not we are showing our input. We need that initial state. So def initial state is going to be a state of false. And the idea is that when this is true, it will show the test component. And when it is false, it will show a button that when you click it, goes to the test component. Okay, so the way that render will work here is if state dot show input, we are going to give back a test component of input else I am going to have an H1 that says uh, top level. Actually, let's put this inside of a div so I can have multiple things. <clears throat> and then our h1 with top level. And then a button. And since I have not, there we go. A button that has the text. Uh, view input that on click, sorry, on click colon equals E rocket set state, state dot copy of showing input equals true. Okay. And then let's go up to hello, and instead of showing top component or test component, let's show top component. Here again, uh, 
it's telling us the fact that top component doesn't need any arguments. We set its props to be unit. We refresh our page. It says top level and view input and I click it and I get the ability to type an input. Uh, but I don't have any ability to go back. Okay, how would I do that? And this is one of the standard challenges that people run into in React and I wanted to reiterate it. We've seen it in the previous videos, but I wanna show how it's going to work inside of Slinky. Test component needs something that can tell top component to change its state because which one of these gets displayed is determined by the state of this component. So test component has to be able to somehow tell top component to change its state. And this is done by passing in functions. In this case, it's going to be a function that tells this to change the state. State dot copy of showing input is false. Now that's unhappy right now because like, well, that isn't what this takes, but we're about to make it, uh, make it uh, show that. So I'm going to call this back. It's kind of like the, the back button in here. Um, and it is of type, nothing goes to unit. Okay, so it's just something that gets called and it should get called when the user clicks on a button. And so we're gonna add a button here that says go back. And when they click it on click, we get our event and all we want to do is call props.back. Okay, that should have compiled. We can look, it didn't have any errors at that point. F5, view input, type stuff in, go back. And we can go between those two views. Now right now note that the stuff I typed here wasn't preserved in any way because that was not communicated to the top level. It is reset every time, but that wasn't what we were going for. I just wanted to make sure that we could move between views uh, effectively inside of our uh, React application. Okay, so we're now ready to uh, start working with play and I will do that as its whole other video because what we're going to do in that video uh, is start working on a seventh version, a seventh and final version of our task list. And that will be very much like version six, except instead of using Scala.js to modify the DOM the way we did in version six, we are going to use uh, React and Slinky to modify the DOM. So it kind of is like what we did in version four of our task list, where we use React in JavaScript, except now we're gonna be doing React with Slinky. So we'll come back in the next video and we'll start the process of making that version of our task list.